I want to start by doing what's called a couche. And that means to basically coat the surface of the panel with oil. Um, and I'll wipe some of this off. But um, rather than painting with solvent today, I'm going to be painting just with solventless. So I'm going to be painting with walnut oil, essentially, to clean my, my brush. And this is an 8x10 panel that is um, coated with acrylic gesso. And so it's pretty absorbent, and um, there's a little bit of tooth. And so I want to just kind of prepare it a little bit with um, this oil to make it a little bit more receptive so I don't have to press so hard. And I'm just kind of making sure every little nook and cranny here is covered. So you can paint um, solventless. You don't have to use Gamsol. And um, this can be quite effective. And um, maybe I'll make a video about it as well. So here I'm wiping off all of that excess so that there's really just like a very thin coating. Oops, got a little paint on there. I wiped that off too. Just a very thin coating of oil. I'm going to use just a little bit of this cadmium yellow to kind of stain the canvas a little bit as well. Okay, so let's start with the drawing. I think um, maybe I will continue to use some of this cadmium medium. So let's go over the colors real quick. So I have essentially what I'm considering to be a split primary. I have ultramarine blue and cerulean blue. So this is my warm and cool blue. Uh, uh, alizarin crimson permanent and cadmium red light, so a cool and a warm red. Um, cadmium, I think this is cadmium light, and this is cadmium medium, but this cadmium light is very similar to cadmium yellow, uh, lemon, so, um, but again, a cool and a warm. And then I've also uh, done the same thing here. I have titanium white, and then I have what's called warm white by Gamblin, and I might use this um, as to help me with some of the highlights here. So I'm just gonna dip into some of this cadmium medium and kind of try to demarcate the boundaries of my drawing because I wanna fit the whole thing in. So I'm thinking about like where are the, the edges? Um, if I just started say at the bottom here and painted my way up, there'd be a good chance that maybe the blooms would run off of the top like so. And so I kind of want to think about my boundaries here as well, uh, the, the whole outer boundary so that I have room for everything. Okay, and we can address the drawing as we go. in this leaf here. I like painting um, organic things because um, they're really quite forgiving. You don't have to be perfect. And I always say nobody's perfect except for God. You know, our, our paintings aren't going to be perfect, but we want them to be good, as good as we can make them. So, yeah, I mean, things are things are already off, I can see. And, I mean, this is the beauty of oil paint. I can make adjustments. I can wipe things away. One of the things here is I'm going to look at the negative space, the space between this bloom and the adjacent bloom. And I'm going to kind of try to carefully observe that shape.
this leaf overlaps this one. So as I'm looking at this, I think that I've made the little pot uh, for this plant too tall. So I'm gonna wipe that away and try to readjust that. You can make corrections, I think, with any painting medium, but um, it's just different techniques. You know, if this was acrylic and it was dry, um, then, you know, we would just paint over it. With oil, we can wipe it away. With gouache, we'll probably paint over it. With watercolor, there's still stuff you could do. You know, you could wipe wipe it out. Putting in a little sign for the dirt and the dark that's in there. So we're going to very soon be thinking about our tonal values. So I'll need to putting in things for the shadows. I think because the um, I'm thinking for the background, I'm gonna want kind of a purplish hue. I think the, the color of my wall here is kind of um, just a warmish gray, but I think I'm gonna shift it towards purple a little bit. So I think likewise here, I want to just make some, scrub in some indication of shadow and we'll come over this later. I'll do a little bit of that in the blooms as well. Almost like I'm thinking about a value map. what we're going to do is we're actually going to kind of look at this a little bit more in detail and um, premix some colors here so that we you know have some accuracy you know you've heard the advice to squint down that is good advice here Why don't we start with the blooms themselves? And um, I want to kind of observe their both um, light and dark and warm and cool. That's kind of why we're having um, this split primary. When I look at some of the strongest shadows, like in here, they're quite, seems, to be quite desaturated, we have a similar shadow right in here and along this side. So also within the flower, like in here. And so we have different multiple things that are happening in terms of the light. That there's sort of 
the external form. You can almost think of these bulbs as a ball. And so the side that's away from the light is going to be darkest. We, we know that. But then we also have, for instance, an area here because the petals are somewhat translucent. We can't just make it a ball like it's a baseball because it's not solid. And so light is passing through. But here we have like an overlapping of multiple petals. And so it's a little bit darker in here, for instance. We see some of that on this side here. Then we also have some intense color in between the petals. And that's because what's happening is the light is entering the petal, tra traveling through it, hitting the other petal, and the light's bouncing around in there. And so that's what's creating this, this sense of glow in between the petals. So we're gonna wanna mix kind of a saturated color for that. And we have some gradations to light. And of course the top edges are gonna be the brightest. And so I, I think that we need about four uh, or maybe five values. So let's mix that up. Let's take some cadmium medium. And when I hold it up and I compare it, it's already quite a bit darker than anything that I'm seeing there. So let's mix it with a little bit of the cadmium plate. to get something that's a little bit more neutral maybe. And I'm gonna look for my darkest tone here. And right now I'm just thinking about tonal value. I think this is close. Let me put in a little bit more of the cadmium light and lighten it up. And I'm not using white to lighten this up yet. I want to see how far I can go by using yellows because I don't want to lose that temperature shift yet. And I do have the warm white and the cool white, but either way, the white will cool it down quite a bit. All right, I think tonally, when I'm looking at some of my darker shadows, I think this is about right. So now I'm going to look in terms of color temperature and saturation. And when I'm looking here, I think for sort of the shadow side of this bloom here, and we'll kind of coalesce that into some of them, it seems a little bit more desaturated, maybe a little bit greener. So we have to think about how do we desaturate a yellow? And one tip that I think this is really good for really actually desaturating any color is to think about using the complement. The complement of yellow is purple. So let's take a little bit of ultramarine, a little bit of alizarin crimson, and mix that in. And there's maybe a little bit more of the blue in there, ultramarine, to green this down. But that's kind of what we're looking for. Something sort of on the greenish side. This is close. Let's desaturate a little bit more. So you can see right away it starts to it starts to gray it down quite a bit, but we're also lowering the tonal value. So it's going to be a little bit of a push and a pull between the color temperature, the color saturation, and the tonal value. And that's just something that we go back and forth with, back and forth with. This is about right. Let's go ahead and bring in a little bit of this warm white. Just a touch of it. And let's just see what it does because we did lose some of that tonal value. We need a little bit more than that. I'm really being, trying to be gradual <laughs> with implementing any white or anything like that. 
I don't want to get chalky with my colors. I think that's about right. I think that's about right. Good. Okay. So there's essentially our darkest dark in the tulips. Let's lighten it a little bit. So I think that as it gets lighter, we generally are also gonna get cooler, except for this glow that we have in between the petals. So let me compare just a little bit of pure cadmium medium to what I'm seeing in the glow. And I'm seeing something similar to that in saturation, but it's not quite so dark. So let's mix in some of the cadmium light. And here we're going for something that's brighter, but also much more saturated. More cadmium yellow light. I'm gonna just call this cadmium medium, <laughs> cadmium lemon. That's what I thought it was, but I think technically on the tube. So I'm trying to right now, again, I'm thinking about tonal value. And I'm looking at those places in between the petals where we're achieving that sense of glow. I think that this is about right. So now as our form on the shadow side turns up, it gets a little bit lighter and a little bit cooler. So let's start with mostly this cadmium light, a little bit of cadmium medium in there and just compare that. And that's about right. That is about right. So I think we're done right there, easy. So let's take some of the cadmium light and mix it with a little bit of this warm white. Not too much. Let's see if we can get Something that's definitely, this is definitely brighter tonally. A little bit more. And I think I want, right now we have four steps. I think I want a fifth step. Something that's much closer to white. This is, this is about right. So I'll use the remnant of that. I'm gonna take some more of this warm white for my highest highlight. I think that I think that's good. Maybe a little bit more white. One thing that I think makes painting from life so valuable, but also <laughs> painting flowers so difficult is that we see um, the variations of color so much more acutely, which is a wonderful thing. Um, and if you do this, if you're painting along, I'd recommend to you to paint um, with your own still life setup. Maybe you wanna um, paint from the photo that we're providing, but you might see if you can get um, your own flowers set up or fruit or some sort of object like that, just see what colors that you can observe because it'll really train your eye to get much more colorful and lifelike and realistic. Let's mix up a color for the background, okay? And I'm gonna use some ultramarine and some alizarin. And this is gonna be super dark. And I'm gonna wanna lighten that up and desaturate it with some cadmium medium. So we're really using all the primaries here. And this looks very green to me. So that means we need a little bit more of this red, alizarin crimson permanent. Um, you may have heard that alizarin crimson is fugitive. 
and that means that it fades in time and that is true but um, some paint companies now are making um, I'm making different versions of alizarin crimson that are less fugitive or I think technically not fugitive at all so you don't necessarily want to buy alizarin crimson but if you see alizarin crimson permanent which uh, this is made by Windsor and Newton Although other paints that I'm using today are by Gamblin, you can use any uh, paint company that you like, but I do know that Windsor Noon makes an Alizarin Crimson Permanent. There's other colors that you can substitute for Alizarin Crimson as well. I'm gonna dip into my warm white, not so much, because we wanna go gradual. And sometimes when you have a really dark color like that, it's hard to see until you lighten it with some white. And this is just way too dark, so let's, Pull in a lot more weight for that background. This is quite red, but I'm looking for tonal value here. Use some ultramarine blue. And basically, I want a very gray purple. my background and I probably should be mixing up more paint than this but as you mix color you're gonna be thinking about tonal value and chroma and hue I actually want to look you know I'm here in the corner so that I can get a uh, nice diffused window light but I kind of want to look at the shadow um, and I think I want to use sort of a the same tonal value for my background. I don't think I necessarily want to degradate uh, it as much. So I actually probably could go a little bit darker here. And now it's a little bit more blue. And I'm just looking for tonal value. I'm gonna add a little bit more of this red alizarin. And the more that I'm adding these primary colors without adding the yellow, the more saturated it's gonna be. And so I think I want to dip into my cadmium medium again, just a little bit. When you add this, obviously I will warm it up if you mix all of your primaries together, um, a lot of times you will get kind of a brown color, depending on how uh, your proportions and things like that. Let's lighten this up just a little bit. And this might be about right. So just looking at this color, I mean, I think most people would say that it was gray and not purple, um, and that's fine but it is sort of purplish and I think it's just going to act as a complementary to um, the yellows which is nice and this will help me tonally and because we charged the uh, surface of the canvas it's scrubbing on pretty easily out these shapes and we can come back and reinforce the background later too but I want to have a sense of light and dark here so we'll refine this as we go but this is helping me see tonal values a little bit better
see how we can kind of cut into that. All right, this is this is more or less sufficient. And then we can come back in, make that stronger later. But now I feel like I'm not, you know, painting just on something that's stark white. I feel like I'm starting to get that sense of light, a sense of depth, a sense of three dimensionality. And so uh, that's helping me quite a bit. I'm gonna switch to this number six bristle brush and it's a little bit of a of a filbert I think but I'm gonna kind of downgrade to some smaller sizes here just to get a little bit more refined with my shapes and I want to start putting in the color of the blooms now so I'm still gonna follow my typical pattern of dark to light. So let's start with this dark color that we painted up. And I'm going to put some in here, like so. And let's get some along here. Just following the, the shapes and form of the shadow. Yeah, if we get a little bit of something here. And I'm squinting down. And looking at this inside here. Great. Let's, I think that's about it. for this here. Let's do this bloom over here. So this petal has a side that is in shadow. And then this one too is in shadow, but there's a little bit of light there. Most of this shape is in shadow. Okay. This third one, a little bit here. And that under painting that we did is making this not show up as much, but in the inside of this bloom is showing. bit on the outside here. Now I see some of that glow right in here. And it kind of follows up. And there's a little bit down in here. That's about it. But that's okay, we want to be sparing with the glow to keep it effective. this later. Okay, and there's a little line of it right there. Okay, great. So let's go up to our next value. And I think this is where we'll start to see if our values that we pre-mixed, if those were accurate or not. And if they weren't, 
well, we'll make adjustments there. So I'm gonna go to my next step right here and we'll go back to this bloom and lay in this. And I'm gonna try and be kind of bold with my colors. And I'm thinking about those steps that are higher. Also thinking about that. Now see that my brush got contaminated with something. We'll go over it. I'm thinking about the direction of the stem, like so. Yep, I like that. You can you can starting to see, starting to see that form take shape. Okay. Let's do the same thing over here. A little bit right in there. I think a little bit here. Okay. Again, trying to follow that form. I'll make some corrections. And I'm gonna go to a smaller flat brush here. This is a bristle number four. I'll make sure it's clean. And as I said at the beginning, I'm not using any solvents. Um, I'll show you here a clip of my silicoil jar filled with walnut oil. And that cleans the brushes very well. Um, but it also conditions the brushes. Let's go back to this one here. Put in some light, just like that. And where else can we put it? A little bit of light right here. A little bit here. And a little bit here. I'm gonna drag it through Over here. Wiping the brush off each time. And put just a kiss of it in here. said we have some here and here and a little bit here Okay. 
that's decent for now. Let's save our brightest highlights. Let's come in with some. be on the side that's facing the light. Gonna use the corner right here. A little bit more thicker there. Nice. So as I'm looking at that, I really think that I can reinforce and darken some of my shadows. There's depth and color, but not as much um, shadow as I like. So let's take this color, let's darken it down a little bit. And we're mixing in the complement there. And a little bit more medium. Uh, cadmium medium, that is. Lighten it just a tad. So the same thing. And I'm just looking at those shadow shapes. Just a little bit here. Curves around. It's giving us more form, for sure. Make that slightly more subtle. Always that ebb and pull. There we go. Okay, not too bad. Let's get in. I think I want to mix up a dark for the dirt. So let's do that now. I'm just gonna use my brush for this. A little bit of ultramarine, a little bit of alizarin crimson, a little bit of this yellow medium. And that will give us a greenish brown, a little bit more red, crimson here, and a little bit more blue. And so you can kind of slowly push it in terms of tonal value. It needs to be darker. And then a little bit more yellow. And then when it turns green like this, we add the red to neutralize that green. Maybe I'll come in with a little bit of this cadmium to add more warmth. Cadmium medium. More red. That'll 
that'll work for now. So let's get that shape in here. And that's gonna just give us some of these darks. Again, giving us sort of a concept for um, the tonal values. And then let's take some more of this blue and ultramarine and make like a darker black. Take some white and gray that down a little bit. And we'll keep this on the purplish side too. And I'm going to use this to kind of mark off my surface so that we see that our flowers are sitting on something. See that? We can pay into that in a little bit, but I'm kind of giving myself a surface, a shelf, as it were, so that we, now we're getting more three-dimensionality as well. I'm gonna mix up, and I'm gonna use this um, color that we mix for the shadow of the flowers, but I'm gonna mix it with some of the purple I just mixed for the surface. Really gray that down to give myself a shadow on the pot here. So we can see that three dimensionality as well. And in general, you want to keep, keep your shadows more on the transparent side. And then you can go much more opaque with your highlights. Now see how I'm trying to kind of follow the shape of this and that's just going to lead to more form as well okay and then i'm going to lighten that up because we're getting some translucency in the back side here the sun is coming through this area here okay Great. Okay, looking good so far. Let's put in the highlight side and we want um, a duller version of that. I'll add some of my white into it. Because I don't want this to be like so bright that it takes away from the luminosity of the flowers. So I really want, and it is, if you look at it, it is quite a dirty um, yellow. Let's just add a little bit more white to that. So, but we're getting that compliment. There we go, I'm, I'm happy with that. And I really like the texture here of that translucency of the paint, you know, by using the brush the bristle brush and uh, painting my shadows things thick it kind of gives us a little bit more texture there awesome a little bit more dirt okay 
Okay, great. So things are starting to take form here. Let's get mix up some greens now. And we're gonna do the same thing as we look at it. We're gonna try to mix up, you know, a few tonal values. So let's mix some cooler greens with ultramarine for the shadows. And so I'll use both a cool blue and a cool white. So dipping into the cadmium lemon. And right now I'm gonna be looking for the tonal value I need. This is probably too dark, but let's see. It's also probably too saturated. I'm looking at the darkest sort of part where the leaves or the stems overlap on each other. And actually like the darkest dark, I think that this, <laughs> this works. So we'll have this be as like the very darkest occlusion shadow. An occlusion shadow is where something is basically setting on top of something else, occluding the light or blocking the light from shining through. So we'll start with that. Let's go to our next step. So again, some more ultramarine and lemon yellow. But we want to go lighter this time. Maybe a little bit more desaturated. Again, I'm going to dip into this cool red to desaturate just a tiny bit. And it's going to lower the chroma, you know, the intensity of the color, but it's also going to lower the tonal value. So we got to come in with some more cadmium light. Kind of measuring that for the next darkest. That is about right. So I'm kind of just looking at my shadows and my different colors. This next color is quite a bit white because there's a, ref a reflectivity to, to the leaves. I think that is about right, but I want to desaturate it a little bit more. Adding a little bit of that alizarin crimson. So it desaturates it. But it also lowers the, vo the value. And that is a little bit too warm. So we'll come back in with some of the blue. A little bit yellow. This might be a situation where I want to dip into my white. A little bit of titanium white. Because I, I want it to be cool and I want it to be desaturated. And that's kind of in general what white does. This is pretty good. Okay, that white was the trick. So then we have basically one step higher and I'm just going to go in with white first for the highlights on the stems and leaves. I think it's going to be brighter. I think that's pretty good, but I want to warm it up. I'm going to stay with the cool yellow. I 
I'm basically keeping it green. It's maybe a little bit too yellow. So I need a little bit more blue. And maybe just a touch of a lizard, just a tiny bit. We'll go back to our white to raise the value. Maybe a little bit more. That's too much. There we go. I think I can live with that. So basically our occlusion shadow, the shadow side of the leaves, the light part of the leaves and the highlights. Let's drop that in. So I'm gonna go with this smaller flat brush and look for the, the sort of the occlusion shadows, the lines that we're seeing. Some here. Here. Okay. There's also going to be a little of that dark on the tip of this. And in here. And I'm not sure if I'm seeing maybe a little bit of it in here. A little bit here. And then we'll do, you know, I think there's not that much. Okay, something like that. So let's go up one step put in the shadow side. Let's go over here, the shadow side to the stem. This here, and this leaf crosses over that one. Okay, and we can be loose with this. This is about capturing an impression. Okay, I think that's really helping a lot. Let's put in the light side. Now of some of these. Let's see in the light side of this guy. Overlapping.
sheep. Okay. Highlights. There's a highlight right on this edge. You want a little bit more white in this. The stem here. Essentially it's edge lighting. I'm just looking for all the edges. This stem. Edge of this leaf. And here. Put it in there. Cool. Okay. So We've got all of our colors blocked in. We've got a sense of light. I think I want to reinforce the background now and maybe darken it a little bit just to enhance the sense of light. I'm gonna come in with a flat brush. This is a soft bristle brush, Windsor Newton. It's technically a bright size six. And see how that allows me to not be as scrubby. I can cut into some of these shapes, and make it a little bit more concrete. give myself some sharp edges. So we want some sharp edges and that's gonna help us get some definition. We still have that oil on the canvas that's making it a little bit slick, which is nice. Let's see. I'm gonna come in here. See how that's bringing out that definition? There we go. I still want to stay loose, but I'm trying to control my brush.
It's more red. So I'm kind of cutting out the shapes. Way too dark. Kind of change some of the color temperatures. I'm okay with that. Desaturate that a little bit. And just get more texture color back here. We don't want like a total solid. reinforce some of the darks in the greenery. This stem needs to be a little darker just to give that form a little bit in here. All right, I think the last thing I want to do is I want to put some highlights on this pot here. So I'm just going to free mix that. I'm going to use some of this shadow color that we had, but I'm going to mix in a little bit of white, cool it down just a little bit, maybe bring in a little bit of the cerulean because we're getting this window light. 
I'm just going to pop in some of these highlights. Nice. I think I will reinforce the darks a little bit. Especially in here. Just to give that a little bit more form. Cool. for some shadows. too muddy. bring some light in here and let's bring some light in here and some light right there it's really looking pretty good I think Force this glow. Let's see. Fix this area. Put some highlights back in. So this is a great way to sign plein air brushes if you use the back end of a brush while the paint is wet. And you can scratch your name into that and it proves that you did it a la prima, wet in the wet.